Good morning and welcome to Greater Indiana Sustainable School Bus Webinar. My name is Kaylee May. I'm the Events and Communications Coordinator for Greater Indiana Clean Cities. Thank you for joining us today in collaboration with our partners, Lion Electric, Bluebird, and Roush Clean Tech, as we look at electric and propane school buses. Before we begin, we have several housekeeping items to mention. This webinar is being recorded and we will send you a link to the recording after today's session is completed. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Um, you'll be able to submit your questions in the Q&A box on your screen. And then at the end of all the presentations, we will have time set aside for your questions. And then uh, we do have a survey at the end of the webinar for you to complete. Please take the two minutes to provide feedback so we can continue to cover the topics that you're interested in. We have three speakers today. Maria Brown is the sales manager of Lion Electric. She has over 13 years of notable experience in the school bus industry. She's worked on several roles, supply chain management, purchasing, alternative fuels, product education, and sales. At Lion Electric, Maria's passion for electric school buses is well served. Leveraging her past experience, Maria enjoys sharing her firsthand knowledge and educating others on the advantages to be had in electrifying school bus fleets. Albert Berlay is the Regional Executive Director of Bluebird. He oversees the sales and marketing of Bluebird school and activity buses in Western the United States and Canada. And Derek Whaley is a member of the Roush Clean Tech Business and Development Team. His work at Roush Clean Tech focuses on promoting clean energy mobility solutions for on-road, private, and public we have a full agenda today. Um, we'll do our best to stick to that timeline. So after I provide a short overview of the work that Greater Indiana is doing uh, to promote uh, alternative fuels in Indiana, Maria will discuss line electric school buses. Albert will then provide an overview of the Bluebird electric school bus. And Derek will discuss Roush Clean Tech's propane school bus technology. Greater Indiana is a standalone nonprofit focused on advancing alternative domestic fuel transportation, including energy efficient technologies across all sectors in Indiana. We are overseen by our board of directors comprised of 14 members representing the following industries, biofuels, municipalities, utilities, transportation technology manufacturers, fuel suppliers, and state agencies. For 22 years, we've been assisting public and private sector members, including cities, schools, utilities, fueling companies, government agencies, universities, and other nonprofit organizations with their alternative fuel fleet projects. We are fuel neutral, providing education about all our alternative fuels, including natural gas, propane, biodiesel, ethanol, hydrogen, and electric. We aid our stakeholders in their transition to the alternative fuel that fits each of their individual needs. We have numerous projects and services, uh, as well as events that we work on with our stakeholders. Um, some of those include fleet analysis. So we work with fleets to analyze their vehicle operations and identify solutions to improve fuel, fleet fuel and maintenance costs, as well as environmental performance. We work with the fleets to identify solutions, find funding opportunities, and aid in planning the implementation of the identified solution. We offer grant writing assistance and recently worked with several cities in Indiana on grant applications for electric vehicle charging infrastructure, including the city of Bloomington and the city of Fort Wayne, um, who were each awarded funding to install level two charging stations. We will soon be working with groups interested in replacing older diesel vehicles with newer alternative fuel powered vehicles through the Volkswagen Mitigation Trust Program Round 3 Vehicle Replacement Grant, um, which was released last month. If you're interested in our help for any of the current funding opportunities or upcoming ones, um, we're happy to set aside time to review your individual needs and set up a plan for you. Uh, we also work on alternative fuel infrastructure planning. Um, we work with stakeholders to plan and implement the installation of alternative fuel infrastructure, and recently worked with the city of Fort Wayne to identify potential charging station locations 
conduct site assessment, apply for grant funding, and then plan for the implementation of 27 level two charging stations. Um, for alternative fuel corridors, we work with stakeholders to develop alternative fuel infrastructure um, that works toward our overall goal to create an alternative fuel corridor throughout the state. Greater Indiana has collaborated with the Indiana Department of Transportation, the Office of Energy Development, and numerous metropolitan planning organizations to support the proposal for designation of numerous interstates in Indiana as alternative fuel corridors through the Federal Highway Alternative Fuel Corridor Program. We've also partnered in a multi-state application led by Argonne National Laboratories for Interstate 70, which covers the states of Illinois, Maryland, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Ohio, Indiana, Missouri, and Kansas. Uh, the fuel designations for this proposal included electric, compressed natural gas, liquefied natural gas, and propane. We have an estimated 100 members and stakeholders that work with us on collaborative opportunities, which include funding opportunities, infrastructure development, or fleet deployment. Uh, together, we host educational and networking events like today's webinar, fostering opportunities for partnerships between fleets and industry providers. Each level of membership brings additional benefits, including articles featuring members' products and services, collaboration on webinars, and assistance on projects. Their membership has helped fund our work to deploy alternative fuels and te technologies throughout the state. Together, we're fueling the future of a greater Indiana. Next, we're going to hear from Line Electric, and Maria is going to lead the presentation. Maria, I'll give you access. Hey, Kaylee, I think you're going to show the video first, right? Or will the yeah. video work? Okay. Yeah. The video work from my screen?
All right. Can everybody see this now? Yeah. Okay, awesome. All right, so we'll talk about um, our school buses here. So we do offer um, a line A, line D, and line C. Um, we offer these in different ranges. So our line A comes with a 75 or a 150, 150 mile range. Our D and C, um, you can get in 100, 125, or a 155. Um, I'll go into more detail on our units, but um, as of today, we have over 400 electric vehicles deployed in North America. We have a couple dozen right here in the Midwest area, including um, Indianapolis. So if you're interested in speaking to any of our customers about their firsthand experience, um, please reach out to me and I can set up a meeting um, with those districts. I mean, I think it's always good for transportation directors to speak to each other. You know, they can give you their full um, firsthand experience of what it's like running electric buses. So I'm gonna go into this other application here and show you kind of a 3D model of our bus. I'll start with a Lion C here. So if you haven't seen a Lion electric bus before in person, um, this is kind of the easiest way that I can show you about our bus. Um, so the first thing you'll notice is it is a composite body. Um, the frame and everything is, is steel still, but the skin on the outside is composite. And the benefit of this, it is, um, it's a lighter weight, so you're gonna gain more kilowatts per mile. Um, you also don't have that corrosion, um, the rusting that you'll see on the under, underside of the body like you do on, on legacy vehicles. Um, these skirt panels down here are, there's no maintenance needed. Um, they're totally interchangeable. Um, let's see, we have a one piece roof. So this is gonna prevent any kind of uh, leaking. Um, Let's see, we offer two different widths of our bus. So we have the standard 96, and then we also offer a 102. The 102 is gonna give you um, an additional six inches of aisle space, which when we get inside of this bus, I'll show you what that looks like. It's really, um, it's really great for the drivers and for the students. Um, these, you have these three lights up here. And this is um, your state of charge. So when all three lights are solid, that means your, your bus is 100% charged. It's really just a quick indicator for, you know, your driver's coming in, your bus is plugged in, they're coming in to start their day, they look up at the bus and say, okay, all three lights are solid, we're good to go, or oh no, this light is only, you know, this light's solid and the middle one's blinking. That means it's only between 33 and 66% charge. So let's go figure out what the issue is. So just, you know, a real quick um, indicator of, of where your uh, state of charge is at. Now you'll notice over here, um, there's a fuel door. You may wonder, you know, why is there a fuel door on an electric bus? And the reason that is there is because we have two different heating options. So we have electric heating, and then we do have a fuel fired heating option. So this is where you would put your diesel in for that um, fuel fired heating. And just to give you an example of this, um, I was at a customer in Missouri a couple of weeks ago, and he had been running um, his bus for about six weeks. And he runs it twice a day, Monday through Friday, and he had used um, seven gallons of diesel in that six weeks. So really the amount of diesel that you're using, um, and this is, we're talking about Missouri in February, so you know, 20, 30 degree weather, or it could be even colder. So um, the amount of diesel that you're gonna use, it really is minimal there. All right, so let's go inside the bus. So this is your, um, this is your cockpit area. Um, so you have your, you know, your typical switches over here that what you're used to. There's going to be one switch up here. It's called Regen. Um, this is, you know, obviously not something that you may not be used to. So all of our buses come equipped, equipped with um, regenerative braking, meaning when you take your foot off the accelerator, that regenerative braking kicks in and it puts power back into the batteries. Um, so this switch can be used. So say you're coming up on an IC situation and you want full control of your brakes, you can flip that switch and it'll completely turn that, um, that regen off. 
Um, over here we have our, your telematics. So these three displays right here in the middle are the same as what these displays are. So this middle one is just is your um, is how fast you're going miles per hour. Over here you have your state of uh, your state of charge. So how many miles you have left until empty. And then this one is going to be your um, kilowatts per mile that that you're getting there. Um, but there's a ton of information that you can get out of this whole telematics, including any um, maintenance information. You can see driver behavior, how much power you're getting back from your regen braking. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot. There's also presets for your heating. So, you know, say your route starts at 7 a.m. and you want your bus to turn on at, you know, 6.45 to, to preheat. So you can go in and set it by day and by time and say, you know, I want this, I want my bus to turn on at 6.45. <clears throat> 6 have the heat run for 15 minutes. And so when you get on that bus at seven, it's gonna be all nice and toasty warm for you to, to start your day. Um, down here we have your, um, there's a master disconnect switch for the battery system. And then you also have a um, coolant shutoff valve over here. Go to the next picture here. So this, I'm gonna try and show you the aisle width. This is a 102 and it may be hard to tell. It's, it's a lot, lot easier to explain in person because when you're going down the aisle, typically, I mean, as an adult, you're having to kind of turn to the side to, to make it down. With this additional six inches, it really makes it easier to just walk straight down. You can go easily um, get to your child check system in the back here. Um, here's just another view of the inside of the bus. Okay, so under the hood, a little bit different, right? Um, so this is your high voltage system. Anything in orange means that it's um, it's carrying high voltage. Um, this is just your this is your driver's heater over here. This is a noisemaker. So this is um, standard equipment for all of our vehicles. Um, we have a noisemaker. The electric bus is extremely quiet. And so this will play a sound if you're going for anywhere from one to 20 miles an hour. Um, it's totally customizable though. You can turn it off completely. You can change the miles per hour that you want it to run. Um, you can change the volume of it. You can change the sound of it. So you can really customize it to what you, to what you need. Um, let's go up on top here. This is kind of a top view of, of under the hood. So same, this is your high voltage. You know, your power steering reservoir. Um, let's look at the, I think this is, here's your stairwell. And then, okay, so you have different charging options. So you have AC, DC, you can get both AC and DC. Um, and then you can have them located here in the front or you can get them in the rear if you would like as well. All right, so here's here's underneath that body what that looks like. So you can these are your battery packs right here in between the frame rails. So you got one over here and one down here, just depending on what your um, the range option that you choose. This is a Dana TM4 direct drive motor, so no transmission is needed with this. This is an inverter, so this um, this takes the AC. Um, uh, charge and converts it to DC. Um, D the batteries take a DC charge. So this converts that AC into DC for the batteries to take that charge. You also notice here we have the battery packs are evenly distributed along the along the chassis. I mean, we all know that, you know, when you're driving and you hit that pothole and you look up in the mirror, you're going to see, you know, some kids heads pop up. Um, we've all been in that situation in the back of a bus where you hit a bump and Ooh, you go flying. So this this kind of helps evenly distribute that weight so you don't have as much of that bounce even um, if you are running on a spring suspension. Next one, here's another look at the kind of the back of the chassis. This is that fuel fired heater that I was talking about. It's right there. Um, a lot of the other components that we have on this vehicle are going to be what you're typically used to. It's a Dana drive axle. Um, it's a Hendrickson steer axle with uh, Hendrickson suspensions. We offer air or spring. You can get air brakes or hydraulic brakes. So a lot of those components are going to be, you know, similar to what you're used to. 
All right, so let me go back to the presentation. All right, so I'll start with the grant team. Our grant team is um, our team of experts on writing um, applications for funding. So we know everyone is extremely busy and these applications can be time consuming. So we wanna help you. Um, if you have a quick call with a, one of our members of our grant team, um, they can help you fill out the application. You can review it and, and submit it. So if you're interested in that, um, you know, please let me know. I'd be happy to get you in contact with one of our um, team members. Lion Energy is our um, infrastructure experts. So we've partnered with um, many different uh, charging infrastructure companies, you know, Nuvi, Blink, uh, ChargePoint, ABB, um, a few others too. So we can help customize your needs. Um, you know, do you want AC? Do you want DC? Do you want V to G? Um, you know, we can provide all of that to you and we'll come in, um, we'll look at your space and we'll recommend um, solutions for you that meet your specific needs and your wants. Uh, Lion Academy, so this is our training, um, our training group. We provide full training um, to your mechan mechanics, to your drivers, to your local um, fire rescue, sheriff's department. Um, Lion Assistance here is, a, is our technical support. So it's a 24 seven hotline that um, can, can provide service support. Um, they can dial into your vehicle remotely and troubleshoot any um, issues that you may be having. Fright Squad, I'll kind of get, it, get into that in our next screen. That's our local service team. Lion Beat is that telematic system that I was um, referring to when we were looking at the inside of the bus. So service centers. Um, so as we deploy units in different areas, we were adding service centers to that area. I mean, just this past year, we've added four more service centers and we have six more planned for 2021, including one over here in Indiana. So um, well, let me go back. So just being, you know, a newer company, we're really, you know, getting out there. So you know, before we, um, if we don't have a service center, then we will grab one of these people from one of the nearest service centers to fly out to wherever your needs are. Um, your your service is going to be taken care of. So, just want to thank you um, for your time today. Um, we have a um, a strong presence on social media, so we do a webinar. My colleague Melinda Sandu does a webinar once a month on different topics for EV, and so we would urge you to you know connect with us on LinkedIn, on um, Facebook, on Instagram, Twitter, whatever it may be, and you know dial into into these webinars. Her next one is going to be with our customer in Missouri, who's going to be talking about his experience with with um, with running an electric vehicle. So um, my contact information is here. Um, so please, you know, feel free to reach out to me um, if you want, you know, more grant information or you have any additional questions. So I appreciate your time today and thank you for having me. Thank you, Maria. That was a great presentation. Thank you. Next, we're going to hear from Bluebird. Um, and Albert, Albert now. Okay, thank you, Kaylee. I'll let you uh, drive the slides for me. I appreciate it. And thanks everybody for joining us today uh, to learn more about our electric school buses and of course our propane buses as well. I'll take you through the electric bus information and uh, following me will be uh, Derek Whaley from Roush. Um, first, uh, first slide. Thank you, Kaylee. Uh, so at Bloomberg, we consider ourselves the alternative power experts. We used to say um, the alternative fuel experts, but now with electricity, we, uh, we've changed that to power. So, so you know, we have about 30,000 alternative power school buses on the road today in over 2,500 school districts. Uh, we build those in propane powered, gasoline, compressed natural gas, and electricity. And actually about 50% um, or more of what we build uh, today is something other than a diesel powered bus. Uh, that's compared to the overall school bus industry. That's about 20% non-diesel. So we certainly 
are the leaders in the all fuel space, all power space, and are pretty proud of that. So next slide, please. Uh, but we're here to talk about electric and let's kind of tell you how we got started um, in electric products uh, to go back all the way to 1994 when we first introduced an all electric school bus, uh, which is pictured here. These are the actual brochures from 1994 uh, of that product. Uh, we built that for about three years um, and uh, we uh, sold those primarily into school districts, but we also uh, had some sold and used for the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta as shuttle buses, which is kind of a neat fun fact. Uh, next slide. And kind of jumping ahead today, so uh, back in 2016 when we got back into the electric school bus business, uh, we received a 4.9 million grant from the U.S. Department of Energy to develop and commercialize a high-powered V2G school bus. Uh, we launched that product just a year later at the STN Expo in Reno, Nevada, and then we delivered the first electric school buses to customers in California at the end of 2018. In 2021, kind of jumping ahead to today, uh, we're currently the only manufacturer to have produced and deployed electric school buses in all product types. That's type A, type C, and type D. Uh, we're the only manufacturer to um, offer a CCS1 connector to allow for either level two or DC fast charging. We think this is important um, that you can get our bus uh, equipped this way, standard. You don't have to make a decision up front if you want to go with AC charging or DC charging, um, you're covered either way. Also, uh, we have V2G capability standard on all our EV buses and actually have our first deployment of a customer just a few weeks ago in Peking, Illinois, who um, actually utilizing V2G on their bus and has discharged energy back to the grid. So that was pretty exciting for us. And today we have over 400 electric school buses sold uh, it's actually in 20 states now and three Canadian provinces. Thank you. Next slide. And this kind of depicts where those buses have been sold and deployed. Uh, you can see the Canadian provinces there and the other 20 states where we have uh, school buses deployed. Uh, kind of a, the neat thing is we have buses running in very warm climates like Arizona and Texas and Southern California. Uh, and also very cold climates like North Dakota, New York, uh, Illinois, and Indiana. So uh, they operate very well in all climates and uh, different terrains. If you look to the right, I'll kind of show you the growth we've had in the electric school bus business. Uh, as I mentioned, in 18, we deployed our first buses. Uh, seven were delivered that year, about 60 buses in 19, uh, almost 200 buses last year in 2020. And we're on pace to uh, do over 200 buses, probably close to 250 potentially more uh, in this year alone. So uh, next slide. Uh, so we'll kind of focus on, I'm sorry, back one. We'll focus on uh, the big buses today. Like, like I mentioned, we also offer a type A microbird um, electric school bus. We'll talk about the C&Ds, however. Um, both of those products um, are available with the uh, same battery capacity of 155 kilowatt hours. Uh, on the Type-C, you can do up to 72 passenger uh, with a range up to 120 miles. And on the rear engine product, uh, you can do up to 84 passenger capacity, uh, also with up to 120 mile range. Obviously, that range is impacted by things like terrain and driver habits and use of heating and air conditioning. Next slide. Uh, so we uh, have developed an EV ecosystem, and that really is to offer our customers uh, a turnkey solution uh, when they're basically making the decision to electrify their fleets. Uh, I won't go over each of these, but uh, certainly involve things like assessment, and that's trying to understand uh, what the best fit is uh, for your particular fleet, um, depending on, again, your terrain and climate and route planning. Uh, we offer financing through partners. Uh, we have partnerships with different infrastructure companies who can come and do assessments for you and determine what's what's needed uh, for your particular uh, situation. Uh, as we mentioned, V2G is also uh, something that we're capable of and have deployed already. So um, in addition, deployment telematics, service and support, 
Uh, service and support I'll mention uh, because we are partnered with Cummins um, and uh, we um, have obviously Cummins support throughout the U.S. and Canada. We think this is a big plus for our customers so they have uh, local support when buses go into their markets. Uh, next slide. Now let's talk about EV options. Questions we get quite often is you know, what, what options can I get with an electric school bus? And the good news is uh, most options available on other internal combustion engine products are available on electric buses as well. So really little sacrifice you have to make uh, when putting buses into your fleet. But options like front and rear, air ride suspension, uh, roof and skirt mounted AC, wheelchair lifts, luggage and tool compartments, and heaters, all available. And also effective with buses we start producing just last week, there's some additional options and standard features that are important to a lot of our customers. Uh, now electronic stability control is standard on electric products. Uh, we've upgraded to a new thermal management system. Uh, the big benefit there is we added a third electric heater. Um, so now we have one heater dedicated to producing or providing heat to the propulsion batteries and two heaters dedicated to providing heat for the cabin. Uh, this also allows our buses to preheat um, the cabin while they're charging as well. Uh, we offer an optional uh, battery insulation uh, that we recommend for the cold climates, and it provides insulation on all sides of the battery. That's really to um, kind of maintain heat and mitigate any heat loss from the batteries as they try to kind of maintain a certain temperature for maximum efficiency. Um, and it also offer a fuel-fired heater uh, on our Type C. Uh, it offers additional heating. It supplements the cabin heaters, uh, and it also can be pre-programmed like any other uh, auxiliary heating um, device to come on while the bus is charging overnight to preheat the cabin for the driver when they leave in the morning. Uh, next slide. Uh, here's a diagram that shows all the major um, system components of our electric school bus. Uh, this diagram is actually a type, uh, it's an RE, but uh, just so you know, our Type C offers the same components. They're packaged slightly differently on a Type C product, but the components are the same. Um, one thing you'll notice uh, is uh, we do have an electric propulsion motor. It's direct uh, connected to the uh, rear drive shaft. There is no transmission. Uh, we don't need a transmission, obviously, because uh, really it really helps on saving weight, saving cost, and maintenance, and it really makes the bus more efficient without the use of a transmission. So wanted to point that out as well. Right, next slide. And uh, why electric school buses? I think most of you are probably aware of most of these. I won't mention them all. Obviously zero emissions for cleaner air is the primary motivation uh, why school districts are getting uh, into electric. Uh, but reduced maintenance costs are a big one, really about an 80% maintenance savings over a typical diesel bus. Uh, just because much fewer components and little, uh, very little needed on the maintenance side for an electric school bus. Uh, quiet operation, that's been mentioned before. We also offer a noise generator that uh, produces a sound at 20 miles an hour or less, really to keep it uh, safe for pedestrians nearby. Um, and the vehicle to grid technology we mentioned earlier. I'll speak of that here in just a moment. My next slide. So vehicle to grid, uh, for those who aren't familiar with it, um, vehicle to grid or V to G, it creates opportunities for utilities to buy back the stored energy on the buses when the buses are not in use. And of course, the great thing about school buses is they have a very uh, predictive uh, duty cycle. They're uh, on route in the morning and afternoons, typically available midday and at nighttime to uh, discharge energy if needed. And that's what vehicle to grid gives you the uh, possibility of doing is discharging the energy back to the grid and potentially um, offering some revenue uh, opportunities for school districts uh, with the utility by doing that. And as I mentioned, our Bluebird does come standard with V2G with a 60 kilowatt per hour V2G system. Uh, next slide. Uh, here's a, a pick there at the bottom of the CCS1 connector that I mentioned earlier uh, that allows you to do either AC or DC charging. Uh, I won't go over all this in detail, but uh, you can see the specifications uh, that are needed if you're doing one or the other. Uh, the big difference, obviously, is in charge times. Uh, with AC charging, you can charge a bus in about eight hours. 
uh, with DC fast charging, it cuts that charge time to about three hours. And also DC charging is uh, required if you decide you want to implement your buses with the, with the grid. Uh, the other big benefit, um, uh, the other big difference rather of the two chargers is level two charging is uh, much less expensive. You're looking in the neighborhood of two to five thousand dollars for the hardware alone plus installation, where DC fast charging uh, can be much more expensive, anywhere in the neighborhood of twenty to sixty thousand dollars for uh, a charger if you decide to implement DC fast charging. Next slide. And here's a short list of the uh, compatible um, EVSEs or charging equipment that you can use with our bus. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we kind of help in the assessment phase when you're deciding to electrify your fleet. And we can assist to understand which chargers would work best for your situation and which chargers in the market are compatible with our product to make sure that you're getting the right equipment uh, that works best for your needs. So we can provide this list. Uh, if there's other chargers you're looking at, we're happy to help let you know uh, if those chargers are compatible as well. Uh, next slide. Uh, we mentioned V2G. Uh, our partner in V2G is a company called Nuvi. They really are the experts on vehicle to grid and they develop the software to allow V2G to function on our bus. And if V2G is being considered, just want to let you know that uh, this charger that's pictured here is the EVSC HD60 um, by Nuvi is a required charger uh, when doing or implementing V2G with a Bluebird school bus. Uh, next slide. Uh, warranty, we get a question about warranty a lot. So the standard warranty on our powertrain, um, which is all the EV components besides the propulsion battery, uh, that warranty is five years or 100,000 miles. And the battery pack itself has an eight year or 125,000 miles or 160 kilowatt hours of gross discharge throughput as the warranty. So wanted to point that out to anybody if they, if they had any questions related to our warranties. Uh, next slide. Uh, we talked a little bit about EV maintenance savings uh, back a few slides ago, but this kind of explains why the maintenance costs are so much less on a electric drivetrain drive train versus a diesel powertrain. And really, it's uh, pretty obvious. Uh, obviously, with uh, EV, you do not uh, have any lubricating oil for the motor. Uh, so that 15 quarts of oil and filter you have to change on a diesel bus is non-existent on an EV powertrain. Uh, we don't have a transmission on our electric bus, so no service there needed. Uh, there are no fuel filters, so no uh, fuel system to service. Uh, no exhaust. So again, uh, no uh, exhaust systems uh, uh, and the costs that are associated with that. And uh, there's no air filter required again. So uh, no maintenance required there. And uh, easily and conservatively, you'll save about 80% in maintenance cost on an EV product versus uh, a comparable diesel bus. Uh, next slide. Training, we talked about that a little bit, but every bus we deploy, uh, we offer training to our customers, uh, both technical and driver training, uh, obviously so they can understand the components uh, installed in the bus, how they're different from an internal combustion engine uh, product. And then driver training, really understanding uh, how to maximize safety and also efficiency. There is a certain way to drive this bus. It has a lot of power compared to a comparable diesel bus, but you have to drive it responsibly to try to maximize efficiency and get the most range possible out of the product. Um, we also offer service training for those components that uh, the uh, customer is going to maintain. And also uh, we've done quite a bit of first responder training. Uh, we found that uh, first responders when these buses are deployed want to understand what's different on this product and how to uh, react uh, when, they be, when they come upon uh, an accident where an electric bus has uh, been involved. So we offer that as well. Uh, we've done that uh, several times. Uh, next slide. All right, and that uh, concludes my presentation. Uh, thank you, Kaylee. Thank you, Albert. That was great. I loved all that information about your electric school bus. And we're now going to turn over to Derek with Roush Clean Tech so he can talk about the propane side of school buses. Thanks, Kaylee. 
Fantastic. Well, hey, everybody. Uh, phenomenal presentations by by everyone, Albert and Maria alike. I've known you both for several years, and it's exciting that we're at a point now because I, I know, Albert, you and I can remember it wasn't that long ago that anything outside of diesel was just a head scratching look at us in a funny way. And, you know, here we are, all the different school bus OEMs are, you know, looking at different options. And we've created this incredible future of clean transportation. And, it's exciting. So for those of us that geek out about, you know, cleaning up the environment and tailpipes and what goes into, you know, children's lung health and safely getting them to from school, it's just candy land. So uh, it's uh, great to be here. Thank you all for, for joining in and for uh, for Kaylee. Thanks for having us. I'm pinch hitting today. Um, the McAllister team uh, pinged me uh, to, uh, to kind of talk and flex a little bit about what's going on in Indiana and what's going on around the country and at Roush, Bluebird, and Ford and the exciting things that are down the road. So if uh, you could go ahead to the next slide, Kaylee, we'll dive right in. So this will pretty much be story time um, about what's happened. And our exclusive partner, Bluebird, I believe we're coming up on our 10-year anniversary and we've renewed our, our wedding vows quite a few times. Uh, for our first bus that was put on the road in February of 2012. And Bluebird, hats off to them, right? So Roush and, and Bluebird were running really parallel for a while of what's coming. You know, it's always been a conventional fuel world. We started to care a little bit about what's coming out of the tailpipes and carb EPA. Of course, we're federally mandating certain emission regulations. And we said, okay, this is going to get a little bit more complex. There's got to be a cleaner, simplistic, more cost effective way to do things. And Bluebird, because all they do is focus on school buses and they've got their pulse on the industry quite well, uh, said, okay, there's, there's a few different options out there. Let's let's search them out. And so between Roush Ford and, and Bluebird, after a few suitors, we all became married and uh, boom, we blinked. And 37,000 vehicles later, a uh, billion miles on the road and over 2,500 fleets, most of those being school districts, uh, both public and private. It's just, it happened really in, in less than a decade when we all thought it would take decades for uh, for an industry to uh, to change so pretty exciting to see what's coming uh, forward you can go to the next slide um so what we're seeing right now between bluebird roush and ford are three great american companies that have really kind of purpose built uh, gone to the drawing board and say, okay, how can we all be a part of this? I mean, going back in history, Bluebird number one was on a Ford Model T chassis. It's still in the museum and uh, people see it, see it all the time. So the history runs quite deep with these companies as well. And today we're going to talk about propane because as there's been so many different alternative fuels and energy sources that have popped up over the years, uh, it's pretty clear. And as you can see from this webinar, EV and propane, there's two clear front runners, um, and, and, and they both have their place. Um, I'm not advocating that propane is better than EV. There is no silver bullet. Roush is involved with all the fuels, um, hydrogen, uh, EV, CNG, um, propane. Um, and then, of course, if you're familiar with our supercharged products and uh, NASCAR, uh, you know, gasoline, diesel, and racing fuel. So we're, we're in it all, whatever makes the wheels go around. But specifically with clean tech, we just got charged up about going after um, the, the clean mobility solutions that are out there. And propane seemed to fit the medium duty and school bus application pretty well. Let's go to the next slide, Kaylee. So as you can see, in 2012, right, 9% is what came out. And we were blown away by that. We thought maybe if we all pull our heads together and we beg, we, we might be able to do a couple hundred units a year. And if you look at 2020, 54% of everything Bluebird built was a Roush Ford engine. Pretty exciting. And we're not seeing that slow down. In fact, we like to joke and, and tease that, um, I mean, we were the only game in town for the first three or four years, I think, Albert. And then uh, we like to think we sold our competitors on the idea of, of green and alternative fuel solutions uh, and non-conventional. So Bluebird has been leading the charge through their dealer network uh, phenomenally over the past decade. And uh, we only see this continuing. You can go to the next slide. So this is a pretty popular one that we've shown, especially at school boards, when you get, you know, the three minutes or seven minutes on a Tuesday night at, you know, six or seven p.m. to kind of walk through, uh, you know, the benefits. Uh, we still believe, uh, and this is constantly changing and evolving, but propane seems to fit these different uh, sections and verticals uh, really well, whether it's day one adoption, uh, energy independence, right? Um, and that's kind of expanding, right? So not just the energy source, 
But where are we getting these materials, right? Where do, what countries do they come from, right? And, and as far as, you know, supply chains and, uh, you know, energy security. Um, and then you look at emissions as well, NOx emissions specifically, because that's the leader in uh, lung health and asthma. Um, the, the Lung Health Association has deemed NOx to be just about the worst thing you could put inside, especially a, a child um, who's currently developing their lungs. Um, you look at fuel infrastructure, right? How does that look to scale, whether you are a one bus fleet or a thousand bus fleet? Um, ownership, costs, uh, with COVID just happening this past year and budgets, always being restricted what is this going to do to the bottom line with or without grants okay um cost of ownership range maintenance we'll get into all these a little bit later on and then of course cold weather operation the only thing i'll say about that is we've got plenty of info on our website i only have uh, 15 minutes today which is like giving a gambling addict one quarter of the slots but i'm going to try and keep it brief um negative 55 degrees fahrenheit is the record i hope indiana doesn't have to beat it um, but uh, we get we do pretty well when it gets cold. You can go to the next slide. So this is where we like to flex a little bit um, to present the information. McAllister has plenty of demo buses, but really we want to show this map and every one of these deployment birds is um, it's not just a single bus, but a single deployment. It could be one bus, it could be um, 500 buses if you're looking at some of the, the larger districts. Uh, what we'd like to be able to do is introduce you to some of these. Indiana, we're going to show a map here in a little bit um, of what uh, different, different districts across the state have done. You can go to that, that next slide, Kaylee. Just go ahead and speed this up. Call them, right? We've got 22 districts running propane buses. We've got 35 districts running gasoline buses. Um, and we even have some districts, I'll pick on, you know, Carmel, that have utilized and leveraged both. They're running EV and they're running propane, which is really kind of a trend we're starting to see happen where, you know, some of your shorter routes, and especially if you can, um, you know, leverage grant funding, you know, have EV run that. And then propane might be great for some of your, you know, longer routes where you need that 400 mile um, range uncompromised to be able to, to get students to and from. So pretty exciting to see what McAllister has done very well um, from top to bottom and, and east to west within the, uh, within the state. And if you want to know from the first Volkswagen round and the second Volkswagen round, McAllister has done, in the first round, I believe they were awarded 82 total buses that they'd helped deploy um, overall. And of those, 52 were propane, two were EV. And then the second round, 56 propane, um, and no EV on that round, but 64% of all the buses awarded have the bluebird. So when people look at, okay, um, I have this money that's been allocated, all these different fuels that are out there, where do I go? And McAllister's done a phenomenal job of consulting and working with districts and saying, okay, which fuel, which uh, product is gonna be the best one for your district? You can go to the next slide. So we're excited about this, okay? The 7.3 V8 Roush engine, generation five. Um, so if, if anyone uh, has, has done something quite well or, or aspiring to do something quite well, it means you've been at it for a while and you failed or you fixed and you've improved. So we're on our fifth generation right now and uh, we're, we're still got plans for the future. So go to the next slide. What we've been able to do, because there's been a lot of buzz around this engine, uh, Roush, if any of you have come to our facility and seen what we do, uh, we do engineering all over the world for all different kinds of products. Things that go under the water, uh, into space, above the air. I mean, engineering is our forte. And we've got facilities, about 70 of them around the world. Um, and some of these are to highlight because this new engine in a Bluebird school bus, in a Microbird school bus, have visited, whether it be hot, cold weather te uh, testing, altitude testing, we've done that in-house uh, for the past, I think, almost three or four years um, with this product and with this prototype engine. So we're pretty excited to see once these hit the road, uh, what they'll be able to do. You can go to the next slide, Kaylee. So these are the buses right here that we've been able to, uh, to demo over the past four years. You can go to the next slide. We're talking max GVWR testing um, from grades, configuration, temperatures, different times of the year to make sure it operates, the dry, the humid, the, I mean, you name it, we test it um, all over the country. You can go to the next slide. The main objective that we wanted to focus on was a leaner, meaner, and cleaner engine. So when Ford looked at, okay, we're gonna move away from its, its uh, successor, which was the, the 6.8 liter V10 for almost 30 years that was in production, we're going to move away from that. We want to refine it, make it better, make it you know lighter, faster, uh, cleaner, and uh, and leaner, especially for techs and mechanics to be able to work on as well. So you go to the next slide, Kaylee. 
So some of the stats that we're looking at here, um, and we can provide more at another time, but we're not compromising on torque and power. In fact, we're getting better on both from his predecessor. Um, from the design and to the compression, better in both those scenarios as well. Uh, we're moving to a push rod, uh, two valve, and then as you can see, horsepower and torque, both of these will become available in both the ship. Um, and uh, a performance shift as well, and a variety of different gear ratios um, that provide optimal fuel efficiency as well. You can go to the next slide. So really where Bluebird different, differentiates um, is, is the Ford relationship, right? You're looking at a mass high volume OEM engine out of Ford Motor Company that's being built, right? This is during COVID year, 600 a day, right? What they're projecting when the, the market really comes back and we're starting to see an uptick, um, it'll be at least, you know, a thousand engines a day, a day that are coming out. Um, and those are purpose built. So when they come down the line, some of you that have seen this happen at Ford, um, which is really only three to 5% of their total annual engine build, they have specific codes that, hey, this is gonna be running on propane and going to Roush, one of our certified QBMs, which we are. Um, so it stands behind the Ford warranty. But then as it continues to go down the line, they have specific uh, different stations where it says, oh, you're, this is gonna be going on a school bus. Here, here's the different you know, specs that we're gonna advocate to be, maintain the heavy duty cycle that a school bus goes under. And as you can see, it's going in everything, right? First responders, municipalities, coach, uh, even you know the Roush performance trucks that we have. Um, and and what great opportunity for commonality for school districts. And I'll pick on Carmel again. Type A and Type C both running propane with the same engine transmission, powertrain, parts, warranty, um, diagnostic tooling. You talk about simplicity, and we'll get into the costs associated with you in a little bit of the benefits of that. You can go to the next slide, Kaylee. So I'll breeze through these pretty quick, um, not because I don't think microbird is important. I love microbird, um, but what we uh, also want to talk about, it's a good segue, is uh, the different products that they have. You can go to the next slide, Kaylee. There is the Ford E350 uh, with a 41 gallon tank. Uh, you'll see a, most of these running in the Boston uh, public schools era, whether that be you know type A or type C, uh, over 50% of their fleet now is running propane powered. And it's uh, really the first time in their history, uh, their service and, and uh, text mechanics were saying that they've been able to have one engine and transmission, one powertrain across the fleet. And they said, especially for a large fleet, they, they can't even stress how incredible and simplistic that is for them to be able to maintain and keep on the road. You know, the next slide. E450 dual reel wheel. Um, and then go to the next slide. And then I don't want to leave out commercial as well, because that is really starting to take off incredibly. Nobody builds a, a better bus than Microbird. Uh, incredible. We've seen several of these uh, take off in, in a lot of these outside of school bus, um, and, uh, and everyone's quite, quite impressed. You go to the next slide. One of the things that we are excited about with the Microbird is we are finally, you can click it, Kaylee, I think we're finally available to achieve a low NOx on this for our type A application, which we haven't been able to before. Um, so again, continually with our Gen 5 driving down the emission footprint uh, to be able to make sure that what's coming out of the tailpipe is cleaner uh, than before. You go to the next slide. So when you talk about environment, you go to the next slide. These are starting to, some of the studies that are starting to come out, okay? This is the first one of its kind that came out in 2019. And we're starting to see some in the European market and the American market do more. Uh, West Virginia did a great one as well. But they're linking low NOx engines, okay, translating into the classroom. So we've heard behavior, they're way better on the bus. The drivers love them because the kids aren't getting loud and rowdy because they're trying to compete with what's coming out of the, you know, the engine uh, compartment, you know, what's going on in the, in the cab. But they're also seeing this translate um, into the classroom, okay? we And if we want to pick on uh, not just the students, but the drivers, I won't name the school district, but there's one in, in Indiana where they had their drive of the year for for years. I mean, this driver had been driving for decades, taking kids, kids, kids to school. And she was developing some serious lung health. And it was really because of this district was very large, um, where the way that the yard was set up and all the diesel buses were idling and she wasn't doing well. So her pulmonologist, her lung doctor said, hey, you, you're not gonna be able to drive anymore. You need to stop. Well, they moved her to a propane bus in a different part of the yard and her symptoms went away completely. So we don't just love to have these certificates and these charts about how low emission it is. We love to hear and see these stories of how it affects these children's lives and these drivers' lives uh, for the better. You go to the next slide. Kind of a snapshot of what our emission footprint looks like. Uh, 
basically look at the bottom, 70% cleaner than the federal standards are today. Also, um, when we see the 2024 and the 2027 emissions hit from carbon EPA, propane already needs them. We don't have to add a thing. You can go to the next slide. Uh, so some of the mo motivators are um, that we've heard all over, simplicity, financial, environmental, and energy, energy independence. You can go to the next slide. Just to give you an idea, because pricing with fuel has just gone up and down this past year. Uh, with propane, it's looking really consistent. That bottom one is the Bellevue and the Conway spot pricing, continually looking lower. So we're finding more and more of it, and the demand um, is actually, even though we're batting all of these school buses, I think there was a thousand and uh, over a thousand percent increase in propane powered uh, school buses over the, the past year, uh, just continually to rise. Um, as diesel and gasoline continues to rise, as we've seen at the pump, propane is continually going down when it comes to auto gas. You go to the next slide. And like I said, uh, commonality, okay? Really, everything stays the same except for really two fuel filtrations that, um, that you have to add at 50,000 miles. Everything else stays the same. So we're not adding anything crazy. In fact, if you want to go to the next slide, we'll talk about some of the things that are and are not on uh, this bus. Uh, so the V8 from preventative maintenance, we're looking at eight quarts of oil um, and about a five dollar fuel fil uh, oil filter, as opposed to seventeen to thirty, which is what we're used to with with diesel, right? Um, and then you go to the next slide when you put dollars associated with that, and you can go ahead and click, Kaylee. It's about two hundred dollars less than diesel when you look at it. Okay, so not not astronomical, but you spread that over the life and over a larger fleet, that really starts to add up. You can go to the next slide. This is not 2024 or 2027, this is today, right? So this slide, we're gonna have to expand it and make these maybe, maybe a little bit smaller, but what's gonna have to be added to diesel buses in order to be able to make them quote unquote clean? Um, you can go to the next slide. So when you look at a diesel engine component today, right, you're looking at at least $21,000 worth of ancillary devices just to be able to keep the wheels on the bus going around, right? Now, a lot of fleets are tracking availability now, okay? so we saying oh it's under warranty right and that's not we don't want to discourage that or discredit that but availability of a bus in your routes is huge right and if some of these go down that bus might be down for a while whether the cost is irrelevant or not i mean a down bus is a down bus where if you can go to the next slide if you don't have them right then you're in a much better uh, scenario you can go to the next slide Kaylee. So this is where we sit currently so you compare twenty one thousand dollars on a diesel bus to today right under three thousand dollars right so you can go ahead and click it's a fraction of the diesel cost that you're having to put on today and you go to the final uh next slide when it comes to uh, engine replacements you can go ahead and click kaylee we're looking at under ten thousand dollars to fully long block with a roush propane fuel system dressed installed you're looking at under 10 grand right you look at cummins you look at other products that are out there not so much and our lead time because they're pumping out six to a thousand a day as opposed to some of the others that lead time is going to be extremely short. We already had a district uh, in, in Florida who forgot to a tech forgot to put oil back in on an oil change. Um, it does, it's a great engine, but it needs oil. Uh, it was able to actually get that bus up and on the road with a short block under 10 days for $5,000. It was a light bulb moment for the district. They were like, wow, we just went through two, two turbos at that cost and we just swung a full engine. So total cost of ownership really came into play. You can go to the next slide. Uh, this is just an, a real quote that we want to be able to uh, to showcase because the question now is, does propane, you know, does it or does it not work? It works. Everybody knows this now. Everybody's into it now. Now we want to be able to show, okay, if you're going to keep a bus for 10 to 15 years, you should look at who you're a partner with, okay? Because parts, engine, costs, you go to Rock Auto and you look at a Ford. Yeah, the 6.8 liter V10, oh, it's on there for sure. You look at some of the others, Maybe not so much. Some of the other school bus manufacturers have been through really supplier speed dating. They've had four or five partners over the past uh, five years, whereas we've uh, we've stayed true and strong with the three for a better part of a decade. You can go to the next slide. This is our, my last one. Um, we love the the environmental sustainability. Don't get me wrong. I'm very passionate about that with two little ones of my own. But we also want to make sure that this translates into the classroom, right? We're still teaching math. We still need to be able to uh, come up with savings. We need to be sensitive to the budget and the bottom line, whether we utilize grants um, or, or not. We want to make sure that this comes out to a positive 
ROI and puts money back into the classroom. And the final story would be there's a school district in Georgia uh, where they saved, I believe it was well over a million dollars um, just on their fuel costs, not even counting maintenance, just their fuel costs, which is what this calculator does. And they were able to raise the drive the, the per hour driver rate, I believe from 15 to 20. It was pretty, it was a steep jump. So keeping drivers, retaining drivers, recruiting drivers, their propane savings were able to do that. And that was just one part of what they will do with their savings. But improving the quality of life for the drivers, the technicians, the students, the business office, that's what we're about. And we appreciate everybody's time. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. That was wonderful. I really enjoyed listening to all the benefits and all of the info about your propane school buses. So uh, before we move into uh, the second portion of the webinar, we do have a short video from Curlin Bus and Sales um, about their electric Thomas school bus. So for more information about the electric Thomas school bus, you can reach out to Dave Dorsett, account and EV manager at Curlin Bus Sales and Leasing. Uh, we also wanted to provide a couple of reminders um, before we moved into the question and answer session. So there, we, from our webinar in March, there are two funding opportunities open currently for school bus replacements. The first is the Indiana Volkswagen Environmental Mitigation Trust Program's Round 3 grant for clean air projects, which is focused on equipment and vehicle repowers and replacements with newer, cleaner alternatives of various fuel types. And they're accepting applications for electric and propane school bus replacements until June 1st, 2021. The second is the Indiana Michigan Power Grant which is open for electric school bus replacements and charging infrastructure for schools in their service territory. Applications for this grant are open until May 17th, 2021. If you would like assistance with your grant proposal, we are happy to help. And if you are interested in applying for grant funding um, and would like to take a look at some of the buses that we highlighted today, we are now scheduling demonstrations for schools um, demonstrations will follow all health and safety guidelines, including the wearing of masks, maintaining social distance between participants, and limiting the number of attendees at each demonstration. Anyone interested in setting up a school bus demonstration should contact George Clark at the contact information listed on this slide. And we will now move into the question and answer portion of the session. Remember to submit your questions into the Q&A box. Okay, so we'll have our speakers pop up with their webcams. Perfect. Right, so um, to start, why don't you each kind of go through a little bit about um, your electric school bus, or your propane school bus and really those key features that schools should know um, as they're looking at these grant opportunities um, and which they should they should uh, consider. So we'll start with Maria. 
All right. Um, so I went through a lot of the key features, I think, in the presentation and kind of what differentiates us from, from our competitors. I mean, one, you're going to look at that composite body. Um, you know, it's gonna it's gonna look nicer. It's gonna it's gonna be shinier after um, after so many years. You're not gonna have the rusting and the corrosion that you do with your legacy buses. Um, I also think our range um, offerings are you know we can really customize to what your range is. So if you're running, you know, you have a route running 80 miles in the morning and um, and, you know, another 80 in the afternoon, and you can take that opportunity charge in the afternoon in between those those routes to um, to charge your vehicle. So I think you know having the different range options um, is you know is, is beneficial for our units. Great. Uh, how about Albert, and then we'll go to Derek. Yeah, I think it's uh, kind of important to consider. I mean, for for us, for Bluebird. This certainly isn't a niche product anymore. Uh, we've built and deployed a lot of these all over the US and a lot of different climates, as I mentioned earlier, um, and they work. And, you know, we it's not theoretical to us. It's not take an order and 12 months later, you might have a bus. For us, you order a bus in six months, you'll be operating it. Uh, we have features that I believe work well in climates um, that customers in Indiana will experience. Uh, you have an upgraded thermal management system. The buses will be warm. Uh, we have options to even supplement that uh, with fuel fire heaters if that's a desire. Uh, we can also provide battery insulation to help mitigate some of that heat loss. I think we really thought about all the things uh, for cold weather climates like Indiana that will help electric buses perform better. Uh, and also the fact that we offer um, a CCS1 connector that Frankly, you don't have to uh, decide when you're on the bus what infrastructure you're going to put in. Uh, you can do whatever works best um, for your district and know that the bus is going to be equipped appropriately regardless of what you decide. So, Yeah, that was a good, that was a good, um, good overview, Albert. Now, I would... I would just honestly say, I mean, look at look at the I, I guess the the scoreboard, the map, the deployments. I mean, listen, you know, you can you can see. I would normally say in a non-COVID year, you know, drive everybody's product, um, you know, talk to everybody's technology manufacturers, tour everybody's you know facility. Unfortunately, we can't we can't do all that now currently. But you know, we still have the phone, we still have email. We have you know, 19 out of the top 25 school bus markets run propane right now. Um, you know, we're looking at just the continual, whether it be, you know, a California school district just, um, you know, opted to, to look at all the fuels. And they're looking at 120 propane buses that they're going to be adding. So, um, and they're going to be putting renewable propane in. So you look at the carbon intensity score um, and we're better than anyone else when you factor that in. So not just from, you know, the, envir the environmental aspect, but also from the cost uh, efficiency aspect of it. Um, but we have plenty of champions that are running out there now um whether it be in all provinces in canada all states in the united states hawaii alaska i mean so getting people to talk to each other and their peers okay how did you navigate uh looking at an alternative fuel uh, i'm not and i'm i mean obviously i'm biased for propane because we've seen so many success stories and we've seen how it's changed so many different school districts um from the budget you know to the classroom to the quality of life from the text drivers um some funny stories you know of, of how it did and and uh, just great great wholesome stories so what we've been able to to do and i would you know really encourage you to reach out to your mcallister rep um, that offers all the fuel types you want a cng you want a gasoline you want a propane you want an ev they have them there right and they've been doing it the longest so uh experience is pretty uh pretty powerful when you're navigating uh into the alternative fuel world awesome thank hey, you Kaylee. can i add something real quick yes Okay, hey, I just want to, you know, let everyone know too that Lion Electric is, that's all we do is electric vehicles. You know, our vehicles are purpose built. Um, our expertise is is in building um, electric chassis for trucks, for school buses, what have you. So um, our main focus, our only focus is on electric. And so, you know, I just want to point that out that it, that is important. All of our engineering uh, resources are going towards that next step for electric vehicles. So we did have a question uh, about the cold weather capabilities and deployments. I know, Albert, you kind of touched on it. So we'll start with Maria. And then if you have anything to add, you can feel free to add on after that. 
Sure. Yeah, we have units running um, everywhere from northern Canada, you know, down into Florida. So we have a lot of experience in cold weather. Um, our batteries, you know, the batteries run most efficiently at 70 degrees. Uh, we do have a thermal management system that will um, ensure that those batteries stay at that 70. So whether it's being heating or cooling, um, that thermal management system ensures that those batteries are, are going to stay around that, that uh, most efficient um, uh, temperature. So, I mean, we have, um, you know, a lot of customers, I mean, we have customers up in Michigan that are running these units, they keep them outside um, to charge them and, uh, you know, they don't have any issues. And again, you know, I'd be more than happy to get you in contact with one of our customers and they can speak to you firsthand about their experience, um, you know, and, and kind of give you that ease of mind as far as uh, cold weather goes. Thank you, Maria. Do you have anything to add, Albert? Um, I think I mentioned it earlier. Obviously, I, I, the deployments uh, are something we can speak to also and, and get you in touch with customers that are running these buses, buses in those climates today, um, North Dakota, New York, Oregon, Washington, uh, Illinois, and of course, Indiana, where we have two buses running. Uh, be happy to put you in touch with those folks so they can understand, um, help you understand kind of how these buses perform. And, uh, and they'll be even better going forward with some of these new enhancements we're providing. So we're looking forward to that and deploying more buses. We just sent some to Colorado with our new thermal management system and the results have been uh, pretty spectacular. So we're really excited about some of the uh, changes we made in our newest product. That is very exciting. Um, do any of you have anything to add? Any um, Anything that schools should know when they're looking at their next alternative school bus, or um, any suggestions, um, any new things going on, anything that you want to add as we wrap up today. I'll start with Derek. Anything with you? Oh, I I think I uh, I laid laid it all out. Um, but uh, now I'll I'll defer to to my boss Albert if uh, if he has any closing remarks. Uh, and I think Derek said it all. I think the important thing is to talk to your local dealer, discuss it with McAllister. Uh, they're certainly the experts in that local market, and uh, they can help the customer really uh, work through all the um, decision-making process and the preparation as they dive into some alternative powered product and uh, know that we, we can provide uh, any need they have and happy to help along the way. Yeah, and I mean, I would just say that, um, you know, we're, we're here to help you. We're here to, you know, help you understand electric. You know, all, all three of us are, are about this, you know, we're, the reason that we're here is for environment, for the health of our children, for the health of um, those drivers in the community that these units are driving in. And so, you know, we want you to make that decision to go to this alternative fuel. Um, and, you know, so reach out, you know, we can bring a bus to your location. You can um, drive it, feel it, whatever you need. We're here. Wonderful. Well, that concludes our webinar. I want to thank everyone again for joining us today to learn more about the electric and propane school buses. Special, special thank you to our speakers, Maria, Albert, and Derek, uh, for giving us an overview of each of their school bus technologies and different programs that they offer. Um, should anyone have any follow-ups or questions, please feel free to reach out to me at Greater Indiana um, using the contact information listed on this slide. Our website also has more information about resources, including signing up for a newsletter. We will be holding Great job, a webinar. Haley. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, we do have an, a webinar coming up uh, at the end of the month highlighting bio-based products. Um, that you can incorporate into your fleet to further reduce your environmental impact. Um, more information about that can be found on greaterindiana.com. If you're interested in scheduling a school bus demonstration or finding out how we can help you with a grant proposal, please contact us. And finally, please remember to take our two quick two minute survey so we can make sure that we continue to plan webinars of value to you. Have a great day, everyone, and stay safe. Thank you.